Hey, hey, what a wonderful day. What's going on, guys? Uh, in today's tutorial, what we're going to be doing is reading that data from the previous tutorial. We had this spinner with kind of a weird graphic going on, and we can select one of these files. And now, what we're going to be able to do is load that. It takes the entry or the data from that file and it converts our uh, text view right here into that information. So, right now, I just have three files saved, and as you can see, each one works. And that's what we're going to do in today's tutorial. Okay, so in the previous tutorial, we set up everything for the file name. Now, what we're going to need to do is refer to that file name and read the information in the file name, and then set that information into our text view, which is the easy part. Uh, so let's go down into our onClick method again. This will work because within our XML here, our button is already set up to call the onClick method here. And so we know if this method or if that button gets pressed, this method is going to get called, right? Makes sense. I just want to specify that because generally I, in my tutorials, I haven't done the XML uh, onClick method for an element, but eh, it's a little bit faster. So now what we want to do is we want to get the information from our spinner to see which file name has been selected. So let's create a quick string called selected file. Set this equal to the string dot value of, and then we're gonna to refer to our spinner that we created, and then we can just say get selected item, and that will return whatever value that item is. Uh, again, the value of the item that we have set up here, it again, comes from our list that we created, and that list is just an array of all of our file names. So again, what this is gonna return is the file name that we're looking for. And again, we just parse that into some string information. We do that with the string value of, and then we refer to whatever our value of our spinner is. Again, it's just gonna be Travis, Awesome Sauce, and F-A, or F, F. I don't even remember the la last one, but I know it's like FRA or something like that. So now we have which file has been selected. Again, working with the spinner, it's pretty easy to get the value of whatever is our items here. Looks like I was right, FRA. Um, but it just gets that value of whatever these items are. Again, these are also our file names because that's how we've set up this application. Uh, so now that we have our file name, we need to learn how to interpret that data. Pretty much the same way we do it in Java. We create a file input stream and interpret the bytes of that file. But let's create a new method to interpret this data. We're just gonna say open file, and then we're gonna pass in the string or the file name. Uh, from our spinner. So now we have to create this new method. Again, nothing new here. And we get the information from, again, our spinner. And so now we need to open up that information. Again, how this is going to work is we have a file input stream, which is like a, you can just think of it as a, like a black hole opening up and sucking in all the data from that file and trying to interpret that data and convert it into a string that it's going to return because again this is a, a text file that we saved. So first let's create a string of the value that it returns. We're going to set this equal to be nothing at the beginning. Just in case we can't read the information, uh, it returns you know nothing and we're fine. The next thing that we have to do is open up that black hole and start sucking in the data from the file name. And we do that with something called a file input stream. You can just call this fizz file input stream and we're going to set this equal to nothing. And then the next thing that we have to do is create a try and catch clause because when you're trying to interpret data, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it's like, hey man, I can't read that. I'm only in kindergarten. Um, so it might not be able to interpret the data. So we're going to have to create a, a try and catch for both the file not found exception. If we gave it the wrong file name, it'll throw an error and we want to catch that error. And also the input output exception. So that's going to be like, okay, we something went wrong when we we're trying to get the input or the output of this this file that you're trying to interpret. But what I like to do when I'm working with Eclipse is just type out what I need and then it recommends me putting it in a try and it also recommends what exceptions I need to catch. But you can do it either way. I'm gonna do it uh, the way I like. So we're gonna put fizz and then we're gonna set this equal to be open file input. Um, again, because we're working with a file input stream, we need some sort of a file input. And we're just gonna relate to the file name that we have been selected. And again, that gets passed into this method. We call it file name here. And now it's going to try and open up that file name. And again, we're getting an error because there might be an exception that this file doesn't exist, but we'll get to that later. So what we've done is we've opened up the black hole and we're sucking in all this data. And now we just have to interpret that data. But first we want to convert the data into a byte array because there's going to be a lot of information. We're going to have to cycle through that array so we know how big the file is or how many bytes that file is. So we're going to create a byte array 
set this equal to be our input new byte array and we're just gonna say as long as the, the file input stream is available still as long as there's still more information coming into the black hole create more and more bytes within this byte array now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all these bytes and we're gonna do a while loop and try and interpret the data into a string value which we're gonna add to our string value up here so let's create that while loop and we're just gonna say while file input stream read and we're gonna pass in our byte array so basically what we're saying here is while there's still information to read continue on and when there's no information left within our file to read this value is going to be a negative one so what our while loops going to be is while you can still read information and while this is not equal to uh, negative one just continue in this while loop okay um, so now it's just going to cycle through all the data and we need to interpret this data back into the string like I mentioned so we're just going to say value is plus equals to our string or new string of the input um, so again all we're doing here is we're setting up a black hole sucking in some data from our particular file we're taking that data and while there is data to be read we are going to turn that data into a string value um, again this is our bytes or our data and we're converting that into a string and adding it to whatever the string was previously Hopefully that makes some sense. I know it's kind of confusing. There's a lot of new terminology if you guys haven't worked with file input stream before. But really it's not that difficult after you work with it a little bit. You just got to trust me on that. And the last thing that we have to do is close up that black hole because we don't want a whole bunch of black holes just trying to suck in everything. So let's just close that quickly. We're going to do our file input stream close and we close that black hole again. So now everything is completed. We still have some errors because we need to add the try and catch. So let's just let Eclipse handle this. We're going to say surround with a try and catch and it's gonna you know catch the file not found exception as we expect here but we're also just gonna grab all this extra information um, that we just typed out and throw that in the try as well we're gonna get one more error and we're gonna say add catch clause to surrounding try and that will add the input output exception and we are done everything should work um, let's test it out And we're done everything should work let's test this guy out real quickly so I've already saved some storage let's just create a new one uh, test testing information can't spell we're gonna save this file we should probably have a notification for this activity but who really cares now go into our reading data we should have that new file called test and load the test Oh no, there is an error. All right, I'm officially an idiot. We forgot to actually add the data to our text view. So let's go back after everything has been tried and catched. Uh, um, we're gonna refer to our uh, text view, which was labeled entry dot set text. Should be nothing new here. And then we're gonna set that to our string dot value. Again, that's all the information that we interpreted. Save this guy and run it, and hopefully we won't get any errors. Oh, so again let's go into our reading data test and then load and it looks like it's working testing information let's just grab another one and everything seems to be working so that's kinda how it works feel free to go to the next tutorial I'm just gonna do a quick overview of this application I'm not sure what I wanted to do with that large text view up here um, but anyways we have a spinner and two text views we load up all of our references to the XML then we call this get files within the onCreate method. That's going to populate our spinner. Again, we are just creating a file name array, turning that into the list, turning the list into a file name adapter, or a, I'm sorry, array adapter, and we're setting our spinner to that array adapter. Next, what we're going to do is once we select our item, that's going to update our spinner, and whenever we click the load button, it's going to refer to our spinner and it's going to get the ID from the list in the spinner, the array adapter, and then it's going to convert that into a file name. We're going to pass that file name into this new method that we created called open file. And what that's going to do is it's going to open the black hole called a file input stream, try and interpret the data from the file name. And if we don't get the exception of the file not being found, that's what the catch is for. We're going to convert the black hole. Uh, into a bunch of data um, or different bytes, a byte array of the data that it sucked up 
and then from that data we're going to interpret it and as long as there's more stuff to read we're going to add the data into the value of our string that we set up. Lastly we're going to close the black hole and then just send the information to our text view. So pretty simple I know it's probably kind of confusing working with data if you've never done it before but it's really really simple guys after you do this a couple times. So again thanks for watching guys and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. There's still a lot more tutorials to come. We have different ways of saving data and we'll get more familiar with some of these uh, ways to read data as well. So thanks again guys and I'll catch you later.